Welcome. Let's explore the issue of dividing by zero. We're all told we're not allowed to do it, but why? What's stopping us in the mathematics from dividing a number by zero? Well, let's find out. Uh, before I begin, let's just make sure we understand division. If someone told you that 20 divided by 4 whoops, is 5, you'd probably say they're right, but how would you check? Well, we'd really do the reverse. Let's look at the multiplication problem hidden behind this and ask ourselves, is 5 times 4 20? Well, yes it is. This passes the check, we know we're right. 5 times 4 is 20, which does indeed mean 20 divided by 4 is 5. Um, as another tiny little example, if someone told me that uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3, I could check that right by noticing that 3 times 2 is indeed 6. Alright, so that's the mechanics of division. Uh, let's get 0 into the picture. Uh, can 0 be the numerator? For example, if I had 0 divided by 5. Uh, some people might be nervous about this. On an intuitive level, we can handle it. Suppose I have zero pies to share among five boys. That is, I've got nothing to share amongst five boys. So how much does pie does each boy get? Nothing. So on an intuitive level, it seems to make sense that zero divided by five is zero. But it also passes our mathematical check. Here goes. Is zero times five? That's what I need to check equal to this numerator. Well, yes, zero times five is indeed zero. It passes the check. So dividing zero by a number seems to present no problem. It's always zero. Well, always. Let's see what the denominator is about. Uh, so let's use zero now as a denominator in a fraction problem. Let's consider now, say, five divided by zero. Suppose someone claimed the answer was seven. I'd have to say they're wrong. It doesn't pass our check. What is seven times zero? Hopefully it's five, but it's not. Seven times zero is zero. This does not pass the check. So I'm afraid 5 divided by 0 is not 7. By the same token, it's not 2. 2 times 0 is not 5. It's also not 3 and a quarter. 3 and a quarter times 0 is not 5. In fact, you can see dividing 5 by 0 has no possible meaning result. There is no value for x I can place here such that x times 0 would equal 5. So people say there's no solution to the problem dividing 5 by 0. All right. In one case, dividing by zero is bad. But look at this case. What if I did zero divided by zero? I claim the answer is 17 and a half. And I know I'm right. It passes my mathematical check. 17 and a half times zero. What is that? Yes, it's zero. I've just proven that zero divided by zero is 17 and a half. So in that case, it looks like division by zero is fine. But actually, you're probably arguing with me. I could have just as well written two. 2 times 0 passes the check. That is 0. Or I could say 0 divided by 0 is the square root of pi. It passes the check. The square root of pi times 0 is 0. So although 5 divided by 0 suffers from the problem of having no possible answer, 0 divided by 0 is also problematic, problematic, but for a different reason. It has too many answers. So the way teachers usually get around this is to simply tell their student, Either way, dividing by zero, whether it be a number divided by zero is problematic, or zero divided by zero, equally problematic, but for a different reason. Just don't do it. Okay, that makes life easy. Don't divide by zero. But for algebra students, it can cause a little woe. Suppose I was asked to solve this very simple algebraic problem, 2x equals 3x. Well, one approach would be say, all right, let's divide both sides by x, and I get that 2 equals 3, and I say, whoop, that's impossible. There's no solution. The original equation has no possible solution because I get an absurd result when I do algebra on it. But actually, this does have a solution. x equals 0 works. So I, somehow I missed this. What's the problem? Well, it's exactly what I said with school teachers say. Don't divide by 0. When I'm given 2x equals 3x, and I cross out the x's, I have assumed I'm dividing by a non-zero number. So I immediately excluded from my mind that possibility. Correct. There is no non-zero solution. But I should have gone back and checked if zero itself worked. In this case, 2 times 0 does equal 3 times 0. I missed it. Uh, let me just do a slightly more complicated example that was a bit perhaps too easy to see the issues going on. Um, suppose I was asked to solve q squared times uh, q squared minus 1 equals 8q squared. Well, some students might say, all right, Let's just cross out the q squareds, common factor q squared. So it's really q squared minus 1 equals 8. I get q squared equals 9. So q is 3 or negative 3. Absolutely correct. They are indeed valid solutions. But again, I missed a third solution. 
by assuming I could just cross out the zeros. I said in my mind, not explicitly, that I was assuming q squared wasn't zero. What if q squared were zero? Then I couldn't do this cancellation. So I should check this possibility. Does q equal zero actually work? Well, yes. Zero times something would indeed equal h times zero. So I missed the solution q equals zero. So watch out. If you choose to divide by common factor in an algebraic equation, better check, is it possible for that entity to be zero itself? Go back and see if it fits the equation, and often it does. It'll be another solution to your, your equation. All right, that's the scoop on dividing by zero. Thanks.